All right, welcome to the Feedback Podcast, everybody. My name is Back, and this is episode 226. Yeah, we're getting up there. Uh, a couple of PSAs, as always. Make sure you follow the feedback everywhere on social media. Feedback BAK, of course, because that's my name. I'm tired of this joke. Um, and go to back to the archives. I've had a lot of funny people on. Uh, Lucas McCurry was on. Uh, Aaron Cheatham. Uh, your boy Mike Hudak was on a while back. Mm-hmm. Um, so go back and check it out, man. It's on Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Uh, share it, listen to it, and yeah, get to f- get to know your local comedians here in Austin, Texas. Um, what else? What else? Make sure you follow Hip Hop Bingo as well. By the time this comes out, the next one will be, uh, I think the Sunday before Thanksgiving, whatever that Sunday is, the twenty first or something. So make sure you follow that. And without further ado, let me introduce my guest. I got the very funny Craig Pagola in his house. Yeah, in his house, you made me. That's important. Yes, because I, I I made an exception for you. <laughs> <laughs> We've been yeah, trying to we're gonna record. This. We're gonna do it at my place. All right? You're yeah. in my territory now. Yeah, but that's because you don't have a car. That's true. Yeah, so uh, this is this is an exception. I'm not gonna do that for every broadcast comic no. out there. Now you might have to. No, 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 no. This is that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> and uh, you know what? It takes me back because I haven't been on this side of Riverside in a long time. Yeah, you're not missing a whole lot. Oh, I'm not. It's cheap it hasn't rent. changed. Cheap rent. That's oh yeah, it is. Always has. I'm surprised. It's probably gone up since though. It's pretty fucking cheap. Uh, we don't pay much at all. How long you been here? This is my second lease at this place, so like a year and a half. Been in the Riverside area. This apartment. But you've been in, uh, you've been on Riverside. Oh, also? it's I've been in this place for a year and a half, and then before that, I was always living up north. Oh which yeah, I wasn't a huge fan of. Oh really? What you got against North folks? It's just too far away. That's it's yeah, not a, not a lot going on up there. Yeah, there is. Yeah. We have the domain. The domain. We oh. have the, we have the domain. Oh, that's right. The Trying to think what else. We have a stadium now. I say yeah. we because I live across the street from there. Sock. <laughs> we can go watch soccer. Yes. In Texas, because everyone wants to. They they're losing though. I heard yeah. they suck. I, I don't. I don't. You don't care because the soccer is terrible. Oh, cool. uh, let's not do this. As a Frenchman <laughs> and as an African man, this is. Uh, I know. Th- I know. Th- it's, hard to, it's hard for you to hear, but yes. I'm, I'm telling you, soccer is terrible. Uh, the rest of the world needs to get on board with that. <laughs> no, no. It, the rest of the world is, is already on board. I think it's uh, it's Americans that don't get it. Ah, we get it. No, you don't. We get, don't. It. We get it. It's called it football with the foot, first of all. We get it because it doesn't make sense. How does it not make sense? Because it's just horrible and boring. It's, uh, and baseball is not. Baseball is precision. Baseball is baseball is uh, boring as fuck too. Yeah, I mean it is. You don't, not you as you boring, for, but you don't not know how as boring as soccer. No, you don't know how long a baseball game can be. Yeah, it is. I've been a baseball game. I like baseball. How long is a baseball game? It can go from an hour and a half to three and a half, three and a half hours. Yeah, I got shit to do. I got. You can't just give me that range that's why, of a time. That's why baseball is the ultimate sport. You want in the background. You have it on the radio. Or are you doing something else? You just kind of come back to it. It's called a pastime. People do that shit just for hobby and shit. Sure. sure. Like, Still better than soccer, though. Are you, better, are you a football fan, then? Football with the hand? Real, real football? No, 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 yes, no, 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 fuck you. no, 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 hold on, we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no, hold on. <laughs> yeah, American football, thus real football, yes, No, no, no you don't even that. play with the foot, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> you grab, you, it's, uh, handball was taken, that's why you call it football. Seriously. It probably, I don't know, but yeah, I, I love football. Is it back on? I don't even know. See, this, this uh, one thing I, I really don't this, give a shit. Uh, opening day was Thursday. Cowboys played the uh, Bucks. Is that your team? No, I'm a Giants fan. Oh, like is is it, is it a tradition in the family or something? Or no, it's just I mean, it's I played in high school. My dad played. We just you know, just Giants fan in the family. Yeah, well, uh, we're from New England, but before New England had a team. Uh, New York was kind of the local team, so he just always rooted for them. Hmm. Yes, I grew up rooting for them. I I don't know. I went to UT for four years, never went to a single That's crazy. Longhorn game. It's crazy. For three years, think of it. But still, I'm like, it just doesn't. I, don't I get it. If you're not into it, you're not. Especially like, I I can imagine those events would be a little overwhelming, if, especially if you're not into the sport. You know, there's 150,000 people walking around UT, so. I can imagine that might be a little more than some people wanted to deal with if they're not a fan of the sport. Yeah, I mean, it's like you can't avoid it, but it, I, I really did for three years, and I was like, no, nah, not, not, not for me. It's, it's, it stops too much. That's my, that's my biggest Yeah, beat. for sure. Soccer keeps going. Football, the real football <laughs> keeps going. Nah, I just, call it, just keep calling it soccer. 
<laughs> I want to know where the word soccer even comes from. I don't know. It's a dumb word for a dumb sport. No, no, no. It's football. That's that's <laughs> what it is. We're, we're going to keep going back and forth for an hour and a half like this. But anyway, we're recording this. Today is 9-11. Holy shit. Is it really? Yeah, dude, I, I had totally forgotten. And it's a, you're not supposed to forget. <sighs> and I t- totally forgot that today was 9-11. 9/11. Like, before before coming here, I turned on the TV and it's all like, yeah, I remember this, remember that. Oh, uh, was it people that was, I remember where I was. Yes. On 9-11. Where were you? I was a senior in high school, but no one fucking, unless someone was on the plane and they got off, I don't care where anyone was on 9-11 at this point, I, you know what I mean? I was asleep. I was a, yeah, senior in high school. Yeah, my my uh, my best friend actually my best friend in France called me and say back are you okay and I'm like I don't know what's <laughs> I just woke up like yeah there's an attack on America and I turned the TV and there it was yeah it was fucking I mean it wasn't it wasn't fun <laughs> <laughs> that's the least you could say yeah, yeah. that's the least you could say bad it's bad day I I suppose yeah I mean I I don't you know it, it's it's one of those well. And the whole country is supposed to rally and all, which it did. Which it did for sure. It did. Yeah, it really it did. Weird. It was uh, in a douche- It was like the opposite of the way things are now, which is really weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, it, we're living in pretty fucked up times. Yeah. Are you are you afraid of COVID and all that good shit? Did you have it? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. I, I mean, I I never got. Uh, I've taken a couple home tests that were all negative. Uh huh. Home tests? They make home tests? Yeah. Yeah. Like they give you, what do you do? You it's get like a nasal swab, and uh, then it's like a little kit that you have, and you put the swab in the kit, and you wait like I think it's fifteen minutes, and it'll come. It's like it looks like a pregnancy test. It's like two lines, you're positive. Really? And you're negative. Yeah. I don't know how accurate they are, but uh, they for sure make them now. Oh, I had no idea. I thought you had to at least send it to the lab because I don't I don't think anybody could be trusted with. Is it like with your phone or something? Does it? No, no, it's like it. You get, it comes with like a nasal swab and this uh, like liquid, it's like an applicator that you put in the, that like test whatever you, you know, you swab your nose and you put it in this thing and then the liquid will test it and it'll tell you if you're positive or negative. Huh. I think it's an antibody test, but I really don't know. Do you, are you afraid of it? Do you no. care? No. Or fuck no. it? No vaccine either? No, no vac- vaccinated yet. No. Oh. We're not going to get into that. I uh, <laughs> well, I'm not like I'm not like actively. Like, no, I'm not getting. I just have. <laughs> I don't know, man. There's some people who get really, really adamant yeah, about I, this. I shit. mean, I don't give a shit about it. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a disease, and people died, and it's sad. What, what do you give a shit about then? Maybe that's the better question. What do I? Well, I mean, not. I mean, I mean, I like I give a shit about people dying, but I'm just not gonna like be super bummed out and afraid about COVID all the time. Do you know anybody who has? Uh, Either died or in a hospital. I know, I know, like peripherally, some people that have died. That like I know who they are, but I'm not like super close to them. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, I know uh, I knew Chris Seeley, the guy from. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes, Uh, yeah. Rest in peace. A few people from from back home, Um, but no, no one like super, you know, super close to me or anything that that has gotten sick and died. Are they really that has even gotten that sick? I don't know anyone that's gotten super, super sick off it. I I don't. I don't either. I don't either. And that's not me saying that people don't get... I, I understand. <laughs> I understand people get really sick I, off I, of it. I, I like how the disclaimer comes after. Well, <laughs> I feel like I feel like I have to clarify a lot of things because people have preconceived notions about what uh, what my beliefs might be. <laughs> <laughs> what and it, and uh, like I understand. <laughs> I, just, I don't know personally anyone that's, that's gotten really, really sick from it. Mm. Shit. So wh- why, the, why the comedy thing? Because you've been doing it for a minute. By the way, congrats on Skankfest. Thank you. Yes, that's Thank really you. exciting. That's going to be really fun. I'm excited for it. Yeah, I'll uh, be there. I don't know. I, why, I just always like doing it. And then it was just like. You have to have something. that Like, everybody has that one moment. I would think that, like, hey, like the one moment when you actually decide, look, I'm going to get on stage and talk to strangers and try to. I make didn't them really laugh. have a moment. Like, I, I, when I was living back home, my friend Allison and I used to go. One of her friends was a stand up. Mm-hmm. And we would go and watch him a lot. And he was super funny. Uh, and I would be like, oh, I always wanted to try this. And she's like, well, you're going to try it. I'm like, no, well, whatever. And then it took her like a month to convince me, and then I just did it. And I, I just liked it. But then that was very early. That was that was almost like, Jesus, that was almost 10 years ago. Uh, 10 years ago? When that happened. But then I, I also took like f- like three or four years off, and I just did drugs. Nothing but drugs and worked a shitty job for like four years. So it wasn't like I wasn't doing stand-up the whole time. Right. I didn't really start trying to take it seriously until I got here. I was trying to do it every day. 
uh, like actually trying to do something with it. But did, did you know, like, as soon as you got off, you were like, this is it? Like, the first time? I didn't did know. You know. I just know I didn't, like, I hated working jobs. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like, I like I doing stand-up. I hate jobs. I'm, I'm my own boss. I'm going to try doing something that I like doing that's creative and uh, is a fun element for stuff. I think that, I don't think there was any specific one moment. I think it was more of a, like, what? I, I don't want to do this. Yeah. So I'm going to, uh, like, and I want to do this. So. I mean, it, it could have been, you know, painting or graphic design. No, or paint. Very terrible. Anything, terrible any writing? I like to write, yeah. I used to want to be a, a novelist before anything else, but then I can't really write that well, so it kind of so slams the door on that so one. So it was a process of elimination? Yeah. <laughs> so I can't paint. I can't dance. No, I, I, can't. I can dance. I just wouldn't well, want to do it, you know, professionally. Um, you can dance? <laughs> I don't know, man. No, no, not really. <laughs> oh man, I will pay to see that shit. We had this, we had this whole thing on Kill Tony when I got on there. They're like, "Do you do this? Do you?" Th-? I'm like, "No, no, I'm not interesting." <laughs> like it was. All right, that's the only time we have folks. It was basically this like was you know, the Kill Tony interview was like five minutes of them telling me how uninteresting I was. I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, kind of." <laughs> really? No, I, I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and try to. No, but it's just like I lived such a fucked up, crazy life for like four or five years. You know. So what, what, what was that about then? Just a just a wild out of control junkie. Um, you were uh, when you were in Boston. You were in Boston at the time. I was, I was in Maine and New Hampshire, right. actually. When I okay. Was, um, but yeah, just like your life gets pretty out of control when it's about that. Like, how bad did it get? Bad. I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know how to quantify that. Or qu- you know. Okay. I mean? is, it, is it is it jail time? Is it on you on the streets? Is I was it, never on you, the your streets. Family was and like I, fuck my, you, Craig. My family was definitely like fuck you, Craig, <laughs> uh, and a lot of my friends like fuck you, Craig. Um, I always. Kind of was able to keep a job or have enough money to not be homeless, and like uh, I definitely got arrested a few times, but never spent like significant time in jail. Mm-hmm. But it was bad. I mean, that was that was it. That was all I worried. That was all I had to take care of was that. And then you do anything you can, whether it's you know stealing or, or whatever. I wasn't like sucking dick or anything. I feel like I you, you, you know, got to say that. Yeah, <laughs> you um, to, yeah. I did not. S- he did not suck dick. Folks. Right. Exactly. But I mean, you do anything else. He to touched him to get high. Um. Yeah, and then the, you were like, "This is it. I'm done." Uh, I got I got in trouble. Uh, I got a DUI uh, while on heroin. Um, oh, uh, and that should was ask what of, it was. Uh, yeah, that was kind of the my bottom last straw. Um, to try to, and it was just like it, you know, just miserable all the time. I mean, I'm pretty miserable now, but I like I like what I do so. This was just I like can, miserable. I miserable. can I can so tell that you like. What you well, do. it's like being miserable with with nothing, nothing else, or being miserable and, and not having any kind of direction of what you wanted to do. So you're just miserable, and it's gonna stay that way all the time. What makes you happy, Craig? What makes you happy? Besides <laughs> uh, killing on stage, uh, which you have, by the way, I've seen it. Thank you. Uh, I like. I don't know. I don't like. It's gonna be a short podcast. I, I like, man. Ju- <laughs> I like, I, I honestly, I like just like being. I, I used to read books. I like being like. I used to go to concerts a lot, but I haven't. I haven't since I started doing comedy much because that's just kind of all I do. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say I like to travel, but I really don't. I like, I like just quiet, simple stuff, you know, because my life was such chaos for a while. Now, right, right. I, I see. So now I kind of just when I don't, it's just like I want to. I mean, I like going out and getting drunk and and you know having fun with my friends, but like I, otherwise, it's just like I just kind of want to chill. Watch movies, and and just relax and not. This is not a dating app, but if you were to, you've traveled or all across the country. No, I, I've traveled a little bit. Like I've traveled all through New England, which isn't really that far, <laughs> and uh, traveled up and down the East Coast a little bit, and I've been a few different places. But I wouldn't say I've, I haven't like toured or anything like that. Not yet. Um, not, what about outside the country? Been to Canada. Been to Mexico. Been that don't count. Uh, okay, <laughs> you, you asked. Uh, <laughs> no, okay, I'll, gi- I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Uh, I've been like the Caribbean on like a cruise, but nothing. Oh, yeah. Do we perform it? No, no. Oh, this was when I was in high school. Me and my friend, uh, his grandparents took us. Oh, that sounds just like a cool vacation. Which we didn't that sounds awful. Because you can just drink the whole time. Yeah, true. Fantastic. If you're in high school, I get it. But as an adult, it's like I don't. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds depressing to be on the hotel. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Hotel on water, just yeah. Yeah, we're gonna get off here. All you do is eat and drink, and that's it. Well, I mean that that in itself sounds awesome, but you're right. You are just kind of like confined to a small room. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. You have to. You're going to all these really cool places, but you only get to be there for like 
in like seven hours. <laughs> yeah, you, you'll never catch me on cruise. That shit sounds, no, no way. Yeah. Not I, I don't think I go now. But if you wanted to go somewhere, where would it be? If I could travel anywhere? Yeah. There's a lot. I mean, uh, not now, but I always wanted yeah, to go sure. to like Australia, New Zealand, but now it seems awful over there. Um, really wanted to spend some time over there. Uh, some parts of Asia, Thailand, Japan, uh, or like, I I don't know. I used to watch a lot of like Bourdain. <laughs> it was like anywhere that like. Yo, d- yes. I, I mean, I think it's well. I think it's one of those things too. Like you could, you can go anywhere and it'd be cool. It's just it's what you make of it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, there's there's the typical. Okay, I'm I'm gonna land in this place and I'm gonna go straight to the resort and yeah, not, not get out that. of it and be yeah. a tourist. Or you actually get lost a little bit. Immerse yourself in the culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which to me would be the whole point of traveling. Would be to like you would not think. do what you're doing, not do what I'm doing. No, you, you would think, but you know, Americans are very bad tourists. That's what I hear. Uh, the French are worse. Okay, the French say. are fucking worse. Uh, but this is my country, and I love it. So I, I need you to, I need you to dial it back a little bit. No, no, right? <laughs> you, can't just, you can't just come on a Riverside and start disrespecting America, man. It's not eleven. I'm not going to stand for it. Oh, on uh, on nine eleven, I'm not going to stand for it. <laughs> See the problem with Americans. <laughs> let me tell you, <laughs> I, and I'm American, so I, I I get to talk shit. I mean, I've talking, sh- I've been talking shit since I got here, yeah. 23 years ago. Yeah. But it's more legit now because I'm a citizen. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the pretty bad tours, pretty bad tours. That's what I hear. Everyone likes shit. Like, oh, you speak. I mean, you're in the country, but you speak English. I'm like, motherfucker, you in my country? Why don't you try something? That is. Uh, but hey, the arrogance. Is. America's number one, so. The, uh, they gotta learn the language, arrogance, huh? man. This is this is the this is the thing that. So that was when you're number one. When you're number one, people are speaking language. People are gonna hate. Yeah, people are gonna hate on the, whoever's <laughs> the best. Like you're gonna hate on on the MVP or the employee of the yeah. month. Yeah. That's just how we are. America is forever the employee of the month. Forever. <laughs> Watch that know. shit crumble. Give know. it. A, give it. A, look, maybe not in our lifetime. Actually, maybe because it's kind of. I don't know. The we've way been, things we, are going, we're pretty bad. Quite a few months in a row, I feel like we've been employed. The month. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think we have raced in there. <laughs> I think this is a yeah we race we're gonna get there yeah all empires fall at some point oh one hundred percent we're still I kind of feel like we're in the middle of that right now so yeah th- th- these are like teen years yeah these are end times uh like we're just trying to figure out who, who we are because we still yeah don't know what the fuck is going on and the system's fucked up everybody don't people don't trust each other people don't even listen to each other the government's fucked up every yeah all those things are true yes. Still number one for some fucking reason. Speaking of that, I met a guy the other night who might be able to give me a job for InfoWars, and I really want to. Are you serious? I swear to God, yeah. Yeah. He's <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> InfoWars. And, I'm, and he was like, <laughs> he, uh, he was talking, he's like, yeah, yeah. He was like trying to be all cagey uh-huh. and not say what he did, because I'm sure usually if he tells people, he lives in Austin, he tells people he works for Alex Jones, people freak the fuck out. I, Alex Jones, big fan. Uh, Is that, was that sarcastic at all? No, I am. These guys fucking hilarious. I okay, mean, funny, yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, he's like, I write, uh, I write articles for this guy named Alex. I'm like, wait, wait, <laughs> Alex Jones? He's like, yeah, I work for him for wars. I'm like, holy shit, dude. I was a journalism major. So I'm like, I was a journalism major. I could, you know, I could write articles for you guys. I don't even care what they pay. I just think it would be fun and funny to write that would be, for wars. That would be a f- really fascinating <laughs> gig, for real. Just write cre- like Hillary Clinton's best recipes for adrenochrome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already, you know, like I could do it like a, a BuzzFeed sort of thing. Hell yeah, that worked right. Fucking amazing. I, I forget that Ali Jones lives here. Yeah, I really forget. I don't think he really announces it. I think he he kind of knows that. It's gonna be hard for him to live in a city like Austin too. That's it's gonna take some balls, I think. Yeah, but uh, he but he knows the people who love him who live here really love him. Really, I mean, I I don't know. I just know like it's such a. It is a very liberal city. It is, but it's run, it's run by conservatives, though. Well, the state is run by. I don't think Austin's run by conservatives. No, no, but I mean, it's like there's still a lot of conservative people uh, in Austin. Yeah, it is an island when it comes to compared to the rest of Texas. I'm, uh, yeah. Trust me, I'm glad I landed here <laughs> as, as, as a Frenchman. And I've never been to too many other parts of town. Like I mean, I've traveled through like some small towns. I never spent any significant time in like Dallas or Houston or even San Antonio. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> I, I love San Antonio. No offense to you, I say, but I love San Antonio. Uh, the best part out, of San Antonio. Shout out Blind Tiger, baby. I love. Okay, that. besides the comedy club. Well, I I like it. I I'm. I, I understand why people don't like it, but I I uh, the food's really good there. 
Uh, and I've never been to Houston, so I'm excited to do that. I, I don't know shit about Houston. Either. I've never been either. Uh, Dallas, I know better. Dallas, like but Dallas, ha- does have this. I don't like the bougie. Dallas looks really cool, like the skyline. It, it looks like yeah. futuristic and sci-fi, and then it's like. But I don't think I'd want to spend any amount of time in Dallas. Like, yeah, it seems really know. like bougie, like old money, white people shit. Pretty much, um, it's it's Katie and Ashley from Dallas. Yeah. That's, the, that's what I picture. It's like the. Got got money, or look like they have money. Yeah, pretty conservative, but yeah, not not for me. So yeah, I'm glad I landed here. Yeah, so glad. I wouldn't have wanted to have. Uh, I don't think I would have wanted to live anywhere else in Texas other than Austin. No, that's not what a lot of people were thinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nothing we can do about if you're making the city attractive, people would fucking show up. Well, yeah, I mean the city's great, and then but people who live here freak the fuck out when anyone else moves here. Like they were supposed to be the last people to ever move here. Because nobody's from Austin. Very few people are actually from Austin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I get, I get mad when people just get out here and start bitching. Yeah, that, that's the only thing. Otherwise, you know, about you know, by all means, come through. Oh well, listen, people don't. I'm from Maine, man. Like what? It's summertime there, and there's everyone from Massachusetts and New York comes there and shits on how much, and then talks about how much things better are in Maine and that, and like Massachusetts and New York. But it's like, well, why the fuck did you come here for three weeks in the summertime? You know, I, I understand that mentality. I grew up with it, and I fucking hate it. But I, it doesn't seem as bad here. Uh, like, it seems like people are, if when they come through, are mostly bitching about other parts of Texas, which mm-hmm. Austin also bitches about. So I don't. They, I feel like they should get on the same page. It's a bitch fest. Yeah. That's all it is. But wh- what is Maine known for? I think I asked you that the other night. Maine. It's known for uh, beautiful landscape and scenery. Like uh, what? Did film movies out there or something? No, it's just what it's one of the it's you have n- more miles of coastline than anywhere else in the United States. Uh, it's gorgeous, be- like beautiful, rocky, rugged coast. And we also have mountains. Uh, it's got every geographical type of landscape except for like desert, I guess. Um, OK, known for the best seafood in the world. Uh, delicious blueberries. We're uh, v- like Stephen King, of course. <laughs> OK, it's a guy. Uh Craft beers are really big there now. That's something that kind of blew up in the last like ten years, fifteen years. Yeah. Uh, like per capita, we have more craft breweries than anywhere else in the U.S. Really? Uh, yeah. I'm not a beer guy, but it's it's fucking crazy. I'm not a, like I yeah I'm not, I drink domestic mostly, but uh, it's. I know Maine's been never been in my on my radar should at be. all. Should be. It's, it's like one of those states that I just don't. I forget about well, like Kentucky and like, Montana. What? Those are both places I want to go really bad. I, I, w- I don't. I don't. I went to Arkansas. I'm good. Yeah, well, Arkansas, Kentucky's like got a rich like bourbon and it, it, the mount, the the Blue Mountains. And I, uh, I, I'm not going for the trees, man. <laughs> I'm going for whatever. I, I'm. Mo- I would be more interested in the people. Yeah, Louisville is supposed to be a great city. L- uh, Kentucky, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I just never thought. Montana, there's few places more beautiful than Montana. So is is the landscape what matters to you? I love like, I love that you know I like if you go to Colorado, go to Utah, see some shit. Yeah, uh, I mean, when I mean see some shit, I mean like landscapes. Yes, I, yes. It, yeah, I know. I know. Would you saying. hike? Uh, I, I, I have. I'm not a huge like outdoors guy. I'm more of an indoors man, but I like going outside and like sitting on a porch and looking out at like you know mountains and stuff. You know that. Okay, okay, okay. Because if you if you keep saying that it's beautiful and all that, and then you just never spend time outside. No, <laughs> I, mean, you know, I spend time, but I'm not one of these people who's gonna like hike the Appalachian Trail. You know? <laughs> like that's you're never gonna see me do that. Um, but yeah, I was thinking on some boots and then that is good. Let's go up the. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go hike. Yeah. For three hours and yeah, camp okay. uh, in the treetops. I like being in the outdoors. Uh, Just being sure. there, not yeah. doing anything. Yeah, I like taking a book and going out in the woods and reading. That's you know, just being quiet out in nature. It's one of the one of the better experiences you can have. I feel like, so, as long as it's quiet. Yeah, yeah. You don't. I mean, what's the point of being outdoors if it's just like people running around screaming? Like, I well, that or play music. Oh uh, yeah, well I mean that's that's different. That's different. I'm not gonna go outside and, like in the middle of uh, middle of the woods and play like Cannibal Corpse or something like that. Oh, that's like. to fit right in. <laughs> <laughs> but like uh, animal sounds. <laughs> <laughs> you go tracking the animals and play Cannibal Corpse outside. But I mean, my my ultimate goal, if I had money, would be that I'd live in Maine uh, through the summer and the fall, like have a tiny house somewhere close to the city, and then during because the, the winters are the winters are brutal, awful. Dude, there's no 
two ways around that. They fucking suck. Uh, they're soul deadening, and they last a really long time. Um, so, so how many how many months are you talking? At least six. At least six. Six. So it's like half and half. Yeah. At least oh, six where it's like, it was like bitterly cold. Um, we're like, you know, like uh, we had the two weeks of snow down here, or not even like a week and a half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like that for six months. Yeah. Oh fuck that shit. Yeah. Fuck that shit. I don't. I don't do. I don't do cold. Yeah, I, well, I mean, I, like I, you don't have a choice, but yeah. Yeah, but I mean, the fact that people are like, "Yeah, this is my home. I choose to live in this." One, well, it's, it's weird, weird up there. It's like a pride thing too. Like, yeah, I live through these winters. Fuck you. You know what I mean? It's it, it's very yeah. much uh, like they people know how much it sucks, so they take pride in the fact that they made it through it. Um, <laughs> well, congrats, you're still here. Yeah, <laughs> I was like that for a while. And I'm like, oh wait, I can just move. I can just go somewhere else. No right. shit. Why would you just put yourself through that? But I do, I do miss it because it's not. Uh, there, there's nothing like it in Texas, that's for sure. Um, well, I mean, we'll freak the fuck out when we get a little bit of snow here. I mean, yeah. it's, it's like with it, if if the city is equipped or wherever you're at, if it's equipped for that kind of weather, fine. For sure, yeah. Like New York, I've been in New York on some of the coldest ever yeah. recorded days, and that shit hurts. Yeah, but yeah. they know what to do. But they have snow plows. Yeah, 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 yeah they, they know what to do. That. And here, people uh, freak out when it rains. Yeah. Yeah, just a little mostly bit. Mostly because we're losing fucking power and shit, you know. <laughs> I, I, did you survive the snow apocalypse? Like it was just. I back did. Home? I did. Was uh, it just like, yeah? Eh, no, it this. sucked because it's like cold is cold. Doesn't matter where you, you know, how long. Like cold fucking sucks. But I was actually. Uh, the main pride went out the window or something. <laughs> I, well, I was. I wasn't even here. I was dog sitting for Martin Hen, who lives. Oh the yeah. Road, and uh, we lost power for like a day. And then he came and got me and his dog and brought... He was dog sitting for another couple that were, like, rich. They had a nice house. They didn't lose power. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I only lost power for, like, a couple hours at his place. But I get it, man. There was, like, for those few hours I lost power, it fucking sucked. Because I didn't... I had nowhere to go. Didn't know what I was going to do. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. I, and I, my situation is better off than a lot of people's. <laughs> so, <laughs> dude, that... Uh, being cold sucks, man. There's a few things worse than, like, being bone-rattlingly cold. You know what I mean? And you're not used to it down here. And that was, like, a different level of, you know, you just walk outside and your your insides hurt. It's th it's that cold. Yes. I remember, actually, speaking of 9-11, I was in New York the day, it was in February of 2017 or something like that. Yep. It was 16. It was one of the coldest ever recorded. And we got out of the... The 9/11 mem uh, memorial spot, yeah. which, by the way, that shit will. You want some chills? There's some. There's a few buildings like that in the world. Like you walk in and you just get the chills. Like it feels surreal to go through that. Exhibit. It's on the spot where the towers were, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a museum, underground museum. And they I went to uh, the Oklahoma City bombing uh, memorial. There's one like that too. Yeah. Uh, it's really is it like? Have you been there? Yeah, I was just there like a, a month and a half ago. Did, is it? Did it? Did it feel like? It's very it's very somber. Yeah. Yeah. Um a lot of fucking people died that like that was one of the worst uh I think other than 9/11 the, the Oklahoma City uh, bombing was the biggest terrorist attack or the deadliest terrorist deadliest? attack in the US. I I think. A lot of fucking people died. It was uh yeah, it was crazy. I mean, you you go to you know, go, go to Auschwitz and you <laughs> go visit Well, yeah, but I I mean like, you know, stuff that you know that was in my lifetime that 9/11 and, and Oklahoma City. I mean uh, Auschwitz, well, you can hear about it, but it's not like something you live through, so it's different. You know, you hear. Well, um, I went to the apartheid museum. Okay. Apartheid in the, in, the, in the 90s. Yeah. And you go to that to that, and you're like, holy fuck! Yeah, yeah. this is. I remember this, I, yeah. even if I didn't, you know, of course, right. live there. But you're like, oh wow, yeah, people treated people like this. Just, yeah, it's fucking just a few years ago. You're it's like, fucking crazy. Fuck. Yeah. No, nah, but uh. I forgot how we got to that. Oh, nothing. It was just cold as fuck when we got out, and then my hands. By the time I got my phone out, that's yeah, a stupid story. It doesn't matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> 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 we keep taking tangents. <laughs> it'll it it'll go where it go. Um, I guess what I forgot what else I was gonna ask you. Uh, w but were you going back to the comedy thing? Were you a fan of anybody? Yeah, yeah, I loved. I still love comedy, which is weird because. Being at like you know hanging out at clubs and stuff now, when like people that I'm a legitimate fan of will come in, yeah, I still get like a little dopey and starstruck because I just like actually just like legit fan. Like I fucking met uh, Kyle Kinane the other day. Oh shit! Yeah, really. He's really short, uh, really short. Yeah, 
And like it was, it was at the creek, and Rebecca's like, "I'm like, is that fucking Kyle Canadian right there?" She's like, "Yeah, you want to meet him?" I'm like, "No, no, I don't, I don't want to meet him." She's like, "Yeah," and she like introduced me. And it was just fucking. I'm like, uh, "Like, what do you, you know, what do you say?" Hi. I mean, I know you just want to be like a normal person, but it's it's it is a different relationship. It's not a normal relationship because I grew up like watching them on TV or what you know. It's yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. Like, and now they're right in front of you. It's it's fucking weird. You ever meet? Uh, you said don't meet your heroes. There's somebody you ever met, and you're like, "Fuck yeah, that guy's an asshole." No. No, there's no one I ever met that like fuck that guy's an asshole. I introduced myself to Tim Dillon one time and I made an asshole of myself. Ah, so I easy regret, to do. <laughs> I regret that. Um, he, I mean, I want to say he couldn't have been nicer. I think he was annoyed by me because I was drunk and being obnoxious. So yeah, uh, but yeah. Um, Were you featuring for him or somewhere? No, I just I met him after a show. Oh, um, I a couple weeks ago I featured for Jimmy Schubert, uh, which he's before. I ever worked with him. He was one of my favorite comics, and that was really fucking cool. And he could not have possibly been nicer. Uh, the, the nice, funniest dude, to uh, the, the nicest guy. So that was cool. I haven't, and I was nervous. I was nervous because I was like, I don't want to meet this guy and have him be a dickhead because I'm such a big fan of him. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, could, he could not have possibly been nicer. He's the coolest guy. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, I don't think that there's never anyone I met who's like, he's been a dick to you. Yeah, no, never one that I like super. I mean, there's been like traveling comics from out of town who came in. I'm like, hey, they're a fucking prick. <laughs> I'm like, I didn't, you know, I didn't like them that much to begin with, or like respect them really. Uh, I try to, yeah. There's never really that I met. I was like, ah, oh, that's a bummer. This guy was an ass. I mean, I'm sure it'll happen at some point, but oh yeah, I've been lucky with that so far. I feel like y- you know how egos work. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially in this business. Yeah. Well, usually in this business, it's the people who least deserve to have one have the biggest one. Yeah, I've noticed that. Especially on the local level. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> no, I'm not going to. No, 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 it's fine. I, I didn't see that. <laughs> but that is a very true statement. No, no, it is. It is. I, I, <laughs> look, I, you know, I'm only two years in, but I'm like, I, I've already seen some shit, and I'm just like, why? Yeah. I, I guess there's, there's, not, there's not even a point to trying to figure out why, really. It's like, it just is, and you just deal with it. You know it exists. That's all it is. That's why it's annoying, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's very annoying. Uh, yeah. I I I don't want to because I'll go off on a huge tangent. I don't want to like hijack the whole thing and make it about that. No, but it just it's no no no. Go ahead. We're talking. No, we'll I don't. Fuck. Nobody's listening. <laughs> it's just like <laughs> there's people who uh, I don't know. They have such crazy egos. It's like yeah. But, but if you were any, if you were, if you were anything, you wouldn't still be here. But is that? Do you think that's an uh, not so much true now? But before it was like people would be here for like twenty years, and mm-hmm. like you know just shitting on all these other people. It's like, well, why are you still here then? If you're so good, why didn't you fucking go to New York or LA? And don't say it's because I don't like. I don't want to do that. You know, oh. I mean? where they just shit on New York or LA. Like, no, you were scared to go, and this isn't about anyone in particular, but about about. 50 people in particular. No. 50? <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm just rambling. I'm being like a, an old man now, and I don't want to do that. No, that's fine. That's fine. And, yeah, they exist. And yeah. Yeah, they do. Wh- what are you going to do? Nothing. Uh, yeah. You, know, you know what? At, at, at the end of the day, it's wha- because I think because it's the it's an art form that you can only do in front of people. Yeah. They're kind of the market. So if you keep if you stick around, like they decide whether or not, hey, now nah, you're not yeah. funny anymore. So yeah. yeah, you're not gonna get booked. That's just how it goes. Yeah, like they decide, not necessarily the bookers, but anyway. Well, that I mean, that is a yeah. That's uh, you, every time you perform, it's uh, you're judged by the audience. Yeah, and the only the, like the audiences can love you. But there are people who book shows, and I hate the phrase gatekeeping, but it is a real thing. Uh, these people who, who book stuff, who m- might not like you or, or whatever, and won't book you. I don't even know you. Audiences love you. Uh, they won't give a fuck about you. Um, but the cool thing about now is, the cool thing, the thing I love about Austin right now is there's like f- three distinct scenes here, right? Three? Yeah, at least. Uh, okay. You want to name them? Well, I mean, there's like the, the people that were here. Were popular b- before, before the pandemic, and sure. they're all st- like they're all still have a valve and they're all doing shows. Yeah, and there's like you know, the creek came in, and that's like its own scene, and then kind of big laugh, sort of its own scene. They're doing their own thing, and yeah. it's like you can just kind of hop between all of them, um, and just find whatever works. It's great. Like, the, I, I was here probably two years pre pandemic, and I've been here about two years since, yeah, and it's 
I like it so much better now. I don't know a lot of people don't, but I, there's a lot of very cool, funny people moved here uh, who hustle and work their asses off. Uh, and it's just been like, it's just been fun. Like it, it was reinvigorating doing, uh, hanging out with some of these new people who are just like, they, Austin held no fucking, uh, like it seemed like Austin, there was this reverence for the city that a lot of the old people had, which is cool. Cause I think you should be into the place you live. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's weird just being around people who just shit on the place they live all the time. And it, for sure. Club America? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll put that one aside, but go ahead. But for sure, uh, the people America that lived there before were like, they loved living in Austin, and that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just, like, it's, now they're shitting on people for moving here. And uh, the people that are moving here. Oh, you're talking about the old guard bullshit? That's, that's, that's the name no, of the No, not even just the old commie, like, uh, Austin, the city in general. Like, it, the people want to treat it like it's this hidden gem. And then nobody else can, this is theirs, and nobody else can. No, 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 no. The, the thing is, I mean, first of all, it was not a surprise. Because for years, Austin was always top three or top five or best city to live in. Yeah. For yeah. filling the up blank. And, up and coming. Yeah. You know, what, yeah whatever, whatever metric they were using. Yeah, yeah, it was always yeah. up there anyway. So this is not new. It, it was going to happen. Yeah. So don't get it twisted. It's like, yeah, this is the place to be. This is the place to yeah. be. Um, And I, it, like... I just p- wish people would embrace that more. And, like, you know, if people are going to move here, so you might as well just get used to it. But, yeah, I just, I back to what I was, like, I like it so much better now than I did pre-pandemic. No, that's kind of like, we have. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's we fine. have, uh, we have. What, how, old, how old are you now? Oh, 38. Just turned 38. Okay. So, you're the close, well, actually, no. I th- how old's Mike? Who that? Yeah. Same age. Same age? Yeah, okay, so. We're probably the oldest one. <laughs> I'm 39. I'll be 40 like in six months. And so, to me, the weirdest thing was always like just being around 20 year olds. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't have the same. Well, I'll take that back. I might have s- similar interest as a 20 year old, and then, but comedy would might be the only thing, the only reason why. Like, I fuck with them. Yeah. But otherwise, I'm like, I don't want to talk to a 23-year-old. I really don't. Yeah. But at the same point, they're probably like, I don't want to fucking talk to 39-year-olds. Probably. <laughs> you know? Prob- I don't look it's, it. Uh, but fuck. That's uh, only having that one thing that brings people together is, is cool. No, that's fine. But, like, I, I don't um, spend, like, I don't spend the time. Like, I know they they they, uh, they they hang out with each other. They go do shit. Yeah. They, that's, uh, and that's cool. That, that's, that's, that's great. That's, that's great. great. That's how you get to, that's how you meet your peers and you get to, know, like, um, yeah, I'm not. I, mean, like, I, go I wish I would. I wish I was more out there, but um, I, I know, man. I like. I, and I like a lot of these kids. They're really cool, but like, they're hanging out and they're fucking. They're going to the river and they're fucking dropping acid and they're having fun. And, like that's awesome. And I'm like, I can't. Like, I wish I. I do kind of wish I could still do that, but I can't. It's so fucking. It fucks me up so bad. I can't. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, that's that's awesome that they're gonna make some of their lifelong friends doing it, and that's fucking cool. And yeah, I hope it, it, it becomes like a class, like a graduating class type well, shit. I, it always does, uh, kind of anything I, like that. I'm uh, just not into cliques. Well, I'm not into cliques when one clique is a group of assholes. Yeah. You know, when, it's, it, when cliques like trying to exclude other cliques because they think they're better or funnier or whatever. Exactly. Like, you can go fuck yourself. But these new kids seem like they're just fucking... Uh, it, they're just fun to be around. They're just living they're like, their life. Yeah, they're living their best life. Fucking, they're great. I love it. You sound like <laughs> two uncles. <laughs> yeah, I sound like an old man. Like ah, these new kids. Ah, you know, yeah, a good time and going to the lake and getting drunk and doing drugs. Yeah. Meanwhile, I'm stuck home. It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. There's so many like really funny. No, they are. They really are. Here. And you can go back to the archive and listen to them. They're actually, yeah, really funny. Really, really. You funny. should get Lucas on here. That kid fucking is yeah, Lucas so is funny. Is. He's such a nice kid. Uh, so happy he moved here. There's like, you know, there's Matt Boyd. He's another one. He, he came here from Tennessee. Yo, I saw him last night. He's the best. Holy shit. Matt, Matt fucking rules. And the nicest guy in the world. Who's that kid that is like a, if you took Bobcat Goldweight and Robin Williams, a Casey some. Yeah, Casey Rockets. Rockets. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. I, I just didn't know him a few times. Uh, I don't like... The kid's got like crazy. Energy. I don't. I. I don't want to sound like a. Go ahead. Go I don't, ahead. I don't get he'll, it. He'll come on at some I point. I don't get it. It's not like. He seems like a nice kid, and he fucking and he crushes. Yeah. 
So I have I respect anyone that can go up there and murder. I just it's not like my I not I'm any like, type I of comedy. I just don't and I don't want to be like because it's not. I just don't. It's like it doesn't. But I watched him twice last night. Fucking kill. Yeah, kill. Yeah. So I I, I, I can re- I respect anyone that does that. And no. uh, he did it, and he's like. I don't know. He's just fucking. He's all over the place. I wish I could do that level of energy. Because uh, I've tried to do like, I've tried to get like big energy in my act before. It just comes out. It oh, I can't picture terrible. it. I can, I can it comes off terrible. You doing backflips on stage and no, like that. Characters. But even just like like yeah, it's just he's uh yeah, but yeah. he's uh he's certainly uh not taking over, but he's uh that kid's up and coming, type getting some traction for sure. Yeah, that's dope. I'm uh, really, I'm really happy for him. I don't he know the guy. He did never Vulcan. Met him. He did Vulcan and fucking killed there. Really? Like, damn. Yeah, I did the same thing. I'm uh, same here. I'm like I, I always wonder if I haven't met him like, um, in person. I wonder if if that also bleeds into. You know, real life. Like, if you meet him, is he always like always? Yeah, uh, who knows? Who know? I don't I know. That's like a stage persona, or what? Yeah. Um, but some people become that. Like, you look at you know what Dice became Dice because yeah. of who yeah. w- his character. Dice you know, was a character. Yeah. Larry the Cable Guy, same thing. <laughs> and he became fuck Dan Whitney. I'm gonna do the <laughs> Cable Guy, <laughs> and this is who I'm gonna fuck be now. Dan Whitney. Yes. I, just to do stand up in suits, and then all of a sudden he's like, "Fuck, I'm gonna be this redneck guy," and then done. And now he's got rock cash and fucking shit. No <laughs> shit. I'm like, is that easy? See, this this is what sometimes you're like, man. I could do that <laughs> if he can do it. I couldn't do it. I mean, I'm saying like, because I mean, it, it it's there's something for everybody. Yeah. In comedy, yeah. and I like, there's certain shit, that, and same here. There's certain type of comedy that. Uh, that uh, doesn't resonate with me at yeah. all yeah at all and so i'm i'm more into i like clever comedy not john mulaney i don't think john mulaney is clever but what? like john mulaney rules really uh yeah i don't uh, I, I don't get him like or the mike berbigley is like uh, yeah, those I, guys i can't i can't, that guy. I, can't uh, I can't do it i can't do it but i like the like in your face not necessarily loud but smart comedy mm-hmm. like a like a ck like i mean i'm just gonna name great I mean, at this point louis was the king shit louis would just do you ever you ever seen him live i've never seen him live uh no i've not seen him live no no oh wait you do the moon tower this year right no you're not no oh shit no moon tower is uh it's mostly uh pre-pandemic people i feel like like a lot of people have been here for a long time, which is cool. Yeah. Well, by the time it's there, it's already passed, but I don't, I really, look, this is one of the festivals I always look forward to every year. Moon Tower? Yeah. I've never really fucked with it too much because it was, it's so accessible. I went to a couple of the, uh, two years ago, I went and saw uh, Tim Dillon did his, this was when it was still Tim Dillon's Going to Hell, uh, with him and Ron Bennington, and that was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. So funny. Uh, but it was because my roommate uh, used to live with Omar Gonzalez, and he worked for Fallout or Cold Town, one of those. And they had like they gave him the, the satellite badges. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he let me uh, use that to go to that event. Um, but I never got to go to any like the big ones. And I think like when I first got down here, I was aware Moon Tower was a thing, but I didn't really know what it was. And then like you know, uh, I had other stuff going on. But it does seem like you know it's a big deal. Uh, it's, it's gotten. I mean, it's a tenth year. I think. Yeah, yeah. I it, mean, I, it, it is. Look at the people. I mean, Atel. I, it's fucking crazy this year. Um, no, I mean, I, I I've been going since the second year. No shit. Yeah, every year. Just like it. I like that over South by. Yeah, well, because Moon Tower is just comedy, right? Yeah, South yeah. by is like everything. Yeah, and, then, comedy. The, and then they added comedy down yeah. the road. Yeah, yeah. But um, Moon Tower was like my South by is like yeah. just to be able to. Hang hang out with the comics and yeah yeah and party with them and all that is like yeah this is yes because I'm I'm like I'm a fan first yeah it's like all the all the guys and I found out about a lot of comics just by going to Moon Tower yeah but yeah. uh just the the ability to you know hang out and talk to them and all that was yeah just it's fucking cool uh, fucking priceless I don't know if uh hopefully I get to hang out with some people this year I mean I, like the other thing is like I don't really know anybody either so it's weird just like show up and hang out because you're still kind of just a fan but you don't want to be like the weird hanger on person no like 
like weird creepy fanboy that's just there. He doesn't want to hover. <laughs> you want, I mean, you want you want those people to treat you like you're their peer. You know, that I mean, I, that would be the ultimate goal, right? It's like yeah, but I, I think, and I've I've talked about this many times on this podcast, but I think if you just treat them like they're just people first, yeah, and not even approach them as a fan, but say hey, what's up? And because if you start, if, if you if you're if your opening line is uh, yeah, I'm be working on this joke. Oh not, yeah, that's not get the fuck out. Of here. <laughs> oh. That's I, I, would, rather, rather, I would literally rather set myself on fire than have to yeah. say a comic I like. Yeah, yeah. L- last time, uh, hey, could you work out the show for me real quick? Or on the last oh. episode, I had a uh, Jimmy Clifford. W- also, I think Jimmy. Jimmy's Shout funny. Out Jimmy Clifford. Yeah, and I told a story about uh, Adam Ray asked me to get on the show. Yep. to do five minutes, and then and after this after the set, um, a friend of mine was like, "Did did you ask him like?" You know how how do you how do you do? It? I'm like, F- fuck no! I'm not gonna go to Adam Ray yeah. and say, well, what would you what you think? Hold on, let, let, yeah, let's sit down I and go over my set it. together. <laughs> I've had fun. I don't know, like I don't think people people have this notion like comics just like sit there with like you know on hang on every word that the comic on them the before them going on stage is doing. And that no. very rarely ever happens. <laughs> like, no. Usually you're either in the green room or you're outside smoking a cigarette or. You're doing anything other than like paying attention, watching, <laughs> watching someone else doing comedy. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, d- have you had a lot of uh, um, people get mad at you for your shit on stage? No, heckling. No, I mean, yeah, I've had people heckle me for sure, but nothing know. like nothing like I come up to you after the show. It's like, hey, I didn't like that joke about no, blah, blah. no, really, that hasn't I mean, happened. You're not either. vanilla. No, I'm not. I, but I, I like, I don't know. I don't like. I don't ever try to be offensive either. No, I don't think. I try to write shit. I think it's funny, and uh, I try not to like pick a side. I try to just make fun of the absurdity of everything, right? Uh, the hypocrisy of everything. Um, but no, I really. Now that I'm saying that loud, I'm a little surprised by it myself. I've had audiences hate me. I've had I've had audience. I mean, but never like. They never really vocalized it, you know. They, in fact, they did the opposite. They just didn't say anything at all. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, know. before and after the show, nobody comes up. No, I really can't think of a time when like someone's like, "That was, I didn't like, that. I didn't like that thing right there." Oh, no. What no. about the opposite then? Like, oh, I've had people come up and tell me they loved it. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's happened. Yeah, yeah. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. But, uh, <laughs> no, I mean, that, yeah, that happens. I mean, you don't want to come across like, yeah, been. Craig Fergola is not approachable at all. No, I, I, I. In fact, I feel like because people come up and say to me, I'm like, oh, thanks, man. Like, I don't know what else to say. That sound, it's, it sounds like you're being dismissive. You know, I mean, like, oh, thanks, dude. You know, but don't roll your eyes when you say that. It, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't roll my eyes, like but but it's well, yeah, to me it kind of sounds that way, you know what I mean? Almost like you're like you're, I don't know, I, it, and it's not, but it sounds, you know what I mean? And I yeah, don't yeah, yeah. It I mean, because it is genuine. Like it's it's really cool when people like come up and tell you they think you're funny, uh, and they mean it. <laughs> you know what? You're glowing for the first time on this podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's it's really cool. I mean, that's why you do it, right? It's like that's the whole thing. You want people to acknowledge you. Yes, you to want love people. you. Yeah, that's kind of the whole reason after four and years people, of when people legitimately do it, it it feels really cool you're just chasing that moment over and over again although i still think it would be kind of cool if people would be like fuck you you're an asshole you suck i'll never remember you it's never happened to me uh no one's ever said it to me like that i'm sure people have thought fuck you you're an asshole yeah, yeah. i just didn't come and like say it to my face because i've seen people do uh right down here one night we were hanging out and it was me uh my roommate ben ben horn uh wait was ben no ben wasn't there it was me uh sarah klein uh-huh. uh adam lucky chris reese and john rice and they were doing this show where like two people go up on stage together at the same time uh-huh. it was adam and chris were up on stage and they had a great set i mean like, you know they're both hilarious um and like i mean i've seen both of them say some crazy shit Hilarious. Adam Lucky does not give a fuck. No, he doesn't. Uh, <laughs> Which is crazy. He's the best. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He doesn't give a fuck. And I've heard him say some crazy, hilarious shit. They didn't. They just had a really good set. They didn't say anything too bad. Uh-huh. And this uh, this girl, and I assuming it was probably like her they them whatever boyfriend came over after. Uh-huh. And uh, the girl was talking to uh, uh, talking to Adam. She's like, you know, you were kind of on stage being like a little racist, a little sexist. White girl first. White girl. Yeah, uh, but the way girl. she was saying it, I thought she was going to, like, the way she was, and I thought it was going to be like, but, 
You were pretty funny. Oh, she's, he was waiting for a butt. I was waiting for a butt. But he's sitting over there. She's like, you know, you were pretty racist. You were pretty sexist. Uh -huh. And then she goes to uh, grab his beer and dump it on his head. And he just happens to like, he like puts, you know, puts his hand on it, stops from doing it. And then she like, I can't, she did something else. Like she knocked over a bowl of popcorn or something stupid <laughs> like that. <laughs> and like ran away. I was like, what a, f like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? What was she trying? Why? I don't know. And uh, John Rice, uh, bless his heart, is like, you dumb yeah, fucking Rice. cunt. <laughs> 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 he's just screaming, fuck you, you cunt. It was hilarious. I mean, he's a gay guy, so he can see Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, can see, he gets away with it. To it. It was just fucking, it was weird. Um, and that was at Buzzmill. And there, I, apparently, there's been a lot of, uh, Buzzmill's kind of, there's been some. Oh, uh, who had a, a drink th a thrown at him? Yeah, a kid had a drink dumped on at him. At a moped mic at Buzzmill. Yeah. Uh, who was it? It was Leo. Yeah. I think it was Leo. Leo. Uh, and there's been some other shit that happened there. Um, so, yeah, there is. And it's never like uh, it's it's always like like woke fans. Of course it is. It, and um, white girls because you can't touch white girls. Yeah. Yeah. You can. Yeah. Technically, you can. <laughs> just not a good idea. I, I did make a joke about wanting to bring <laughs> back Sharia law to the United States, but just for white women. And uh, the, the white women didn't like it. But I was. You almost did, or you did it? No, I did. I did, and it wasn't even really a joke because they're just obnoxious. <laughs> <laughs> um, so bringing back Sharia law just for white women might be a thing you can consider. Yeah, can't live with them. Can't live without them. We need white women. <laughs> <laughs> can't live with them. They only need one eye hole. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, white women in Austin are uh, entitled white women. They shouldn't just be white women. Well, and it's a very well, awesome white women. Most. Yeah, they, yeah, they exist. Yeah, they exist, but there there is a you know a tip on their shoulder like hey, yeah I'm you can't touch me so I can see whatever the fuck I want yeah type of thing every time every time you hear horror stories of heckling from like professional comics it's I wish you could just travel like with like Amanda Nunez like and then like any like time some girl starts getting mouthy and talking shit you just have like her go and beat the fuck <laughs> 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 I'm like get her get her I can't do anything but you can you know. Yeah, that's what it is. It's like I, and I, I think that's what it is. With a lot of like, there's a lot of mouthy dudes that live in the city too, and I think it's uh, uh just haven't been punched in the face ever in their lives, um, because they can so they can talk mad shit, uh, online. Most of them don't do it in person, because I mean, there's I, I, not it's still still that. white guys. You hear? You, you get a hit no, it's people. not all white. What are you kidding me? I'm trying to make it a race thing. It's, it's not. It's not. Because I'm a white guy and I don't talk crazy well, shit online. Okay, but I'm saying <laughs> chances are it's not everybody. Just full disclaimer here. Full disclaimer. I'm not saying if you're an asshole, there's no color for assholes. That's true. 100%. All assholes, there's, there's assholes of all, of all kinds. That's true. But chances are. No? Chances are if you're an asshole, you're a white guy? Yeah. No, I mean, it depends. Like... I'm just shooting where, shit I, where I grew up. Yeah, chances are because because uh, chan chances are everyone there was white. Yeah, because so, it's Maine. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I yeah. I think uh, I think uh, assholes. No, no race, color, and creed. They're pretty across the board. No, I I, I, I do agree. I do agree. I mean, you get like, yeah, if you watch like the Woodstock '99 documentary, yo, that shit, was gonna be dude, the assholes who are white. That was, is, <laughs> okay, I, I brought it. I brought it up. But it was like my dough shit. Uh, a few weeks ago, and when I watched, because I remember, I remember that year. Yeah, I remember that festival very well. You were there? No. Fuck. Oh, <laughs> you said you remember the festival? I, but no, I remember it being on TV. I remember that was like huge. It was uh, MTV was all over that festival at the time, and it was fun to go back and watch it. I remember watching it and I'm just being like, "This looks kind of shitty," and then like. I'm trying to find out everyone working there felt the like this is fucking hell. Yes. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> I mean, w when when they actually break it down in terms of. How the festival was set up, yeah. How the lineup was set up. So you got Rage Against the Machine and Limp Bizkit and Metallica. Just that fucking asshole who was like the promoter, who literally at oh. one point in that documentary says, "Like, well, if those girls didn't want to get raped, they shouldn't have been walking around naked." Like he literally says that. Yeah, like, fuck <laughs> this guy. It goes. I, I thought he did a good job. There was some, a few incidents here and, and there, he, like but blaming, no girl blaming Limp Bizkit, bl blaming Fred Durst for doing exactly uh. what Fred Durst was gonna do, like. <laughs> You hired Limp Bizkit, and you're mad, like, well, I got the crowd a little amped up. It's like, you know, I don't remember. I mean, even back then, I didn't know how bad it got until I watched the documentary. Yeah. As far as like, like lighting up the, 
stage on fire. I remember, I remember when they it was all about the mud about, shit. I yeah. remember that. Well, which, come to find out, was mostly shit. Shit. <laughs> it was shit. Yeah, it was <laughs> it wasn't much even shit. mud. Uh, but when they, it got really dark, and they were talking about, like, uh, that paramedic guy, like, brought in a woman who had clearly been, like, sexually assaulted. Um, and, like, just, like, when they started, like, when they allude to probably how much that happened there. Yeah. Uh, it, it's fucking nuts. Um yeah, you just put a bunch of people in, and you put them in a terrible circumstance like that. You feed them a bunch of booze and uh, just let them go, and then I'll yeah, bad shit's gonna happen. I, I like the, uh, I mean, I like, like the the psychology of it, like when they talk about how like Woodstock '69 actually stood for something. Yeah, you know there was actually, I, yeah, but I think that's kind of bullshit too. No, I mean, they no, talk about it in the documentary how it was like. Yeah, there was still there was as many heroin overdoses there as there was. No, here. no, sure, sure, yeah. sure. But but uh, but uh, what I'm saying is there was an actual overall feeling about yes. it, and then you're like, then you fast forward thirty years later, and the hottest thing is girls going wild. Yeah, and you that two thousand is right around the corner. Well, and, and there well, was think, nothing really. Well, and it, it, like it, it was corporatized. It was you know, yeah. It was like it was just, they were trying to make money off this idea of like freak. Peace, love, music, and all that bullshit. But they're also charging fucking, you know, twenty dollars for a bottle of water, and it's one hundred and forty degrees out, and people are like fucking pissed off. And yeah, yeah, they're gonna smash a bunch of shit. Like, w- once you like watch that documentary, you're like, oh, of course it happened like this. How could it have oh. happened any other way? Of course it went down like this. You know, and uh, that actually, that year I went to Cancun for spring break, nineteen ninety nine. Nineteen ninety nine. And that shit was so. You know, remember ba- back then MTV was doing the like, eh, hey, with spring break in Cancun, yeah, yeah, yeah. all that bullshit, and it was all fabricated. <laughs> so I remember, um, so they they were filming at one of the you know main bars there. Yeah, and there was a lady that would go through. So to to be part of the taping, you have to be there at like nine nine in the morning, <sighs> after like a all night partying and yeah. drugs and everything. You show up. And there's a lady that literally walks through the, the crowd and goes, you got big tits. You go on stage. And she, was, <laughs> <laughs> she would say that. Pretty like, fucking oh, solid job right I, there. I, right, I, I you like your haircut. Over there. Yeah, uh, haircut, nice haircut. You're going to be over there. She picked me because I had, I had, like, cool necklaces. And I'm on stage, and I'm passing out, and there's Carson Daly and Snoop Dogg. And Carl- passing out? Yeah, because I was tired as fuck. Oh, yeah. Okay. And they put me in the stand. And Comedy Electra couldn't read cue cards, so they had to do like twenty different takes. Yeah, that makes sense. If she couldn't read cue cards. And then at the end of that, they're like, "Yo, uh, the same lady was going through the entire bar and picking out people to film the like the last segment of their spring break yeah. coverage." And they said, "All right, we're gonna meet up at this club tonight. Uh, make sure, you know, dress up a little bit, and then the bus will be there to to <laughs> take." So we go back, we get ready. Um, we get to the club and they go, oh, no, this is not where it's going to happen. Uh, the bus is going to take you. So they call a bus. It's about, I'll say, 30 people on that bus. Yeah. We all get decked out. It's hot as fuck. And th- when you take the bus in Cancun, uh, you can't, y- you have to, there's no really a bus, there's no bus stops. Yeah. You have yeah. to tell the dude to stop. Like, hey, stop. Like, to pull stop. Over. <laughs> yeah, this big bus. yeah. And some asshole said pull over too early. So there was no representative from MTV on the bus with us. Okay. The guy was just supposed to know to go in that direction. Yeah. Okay. And somebody said, Alto, <laughs> bus stops. We get off the bus and we keep walking because okay. we're not even there yet. We get to a hotel and they were and they, were, they had pitched it like, yeah, it was going to be like the last segment that we're filming. It's going to be a party. Yeah. You know, all the celebrities will be there. Coming to lecture. Snoop is going to be dope. I'm like, all right, cool. I got chosen yeah. you know, to party with yeah. MTV and shit. We get there and it's literally there's like a film crew around the pool. They didn't give us anything to drink. They didn't give us anything to eat. And they, the same lady was like, "All right, big tits, you stay you stay over here. <laughs> <laughs> you right, with the tits, necklace, yeah. you sit you sit over there." And I'm like, "I'm not doing this. I got the fuck out and I went to the club." Yeah, fuck that. That sounds. So this was this was since then I never trusted MTV. That was so weird. Like our spring break was all that was such a big thing. It still is. Is it though? I mean, because it was like. The it's thing. The institution back then. It was like yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. I got like, where are you going for spring break? Spring breaks. It was fun. It was uh, Cancun, Padre, um, <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Is it people? No, South Beach, maybe. 
What what are the big ones now? I don't even fucking know. Like, I, don't know. I, I never. I literally. I went to uh, Canada one time on spring break. Went to Montreal. Uh, Montreal's dope though. Montreal's dope as fuck, but uh, it's not like a hot spring break spot. You know? <laughs> it's still, it's still <laughs> quite cold in Montreal <laughs> in the spring. Yeah, don't uh, go. Don't go in spring. Yeah. Montreal's dope in the summer. Yeah, but uh, I don't, yeah, I don't even know. Because uh, yeah. remember, the goes going wild tapes. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Do you own them? No, no. You I borrowed mean, those still, things. Like, you download them. I mean, I, I've seen them, um, but it was like, you guys know there's like the internet and porn on there is way better, right? Like, yes. Like people are like, well, the internet wasn't what it was back then. Like, yeah, but it was still better than, you know, paying fifty bucks for a VHS tape. Did you still were, better than that. I mean, you had a. Um, that's what they actually talk about in that, in that documentary because there was the girls going wild. There was a yeah. Jerry Springer shit. Yeah. So what, what I, dude, I had no idea that th- that thing existed until I came to this country, and I was like, "What, J- Jerry Springer or yeah, just like that kind, yeah, of yeah, that kind of like a trash TV yeah. type shit, yeah, because yeah. there was Jenny Jones, yeah, there was like a, uh, Ricky, it seems like, like a name? very uniquely American thing, yeah, yeah, y'all number one, so you can do <laughs> that's right, <laughs> you are goddamn right, we're we go, we go, we go invite the Ku Klux Klan on stage. <laughs> Get a bunch you know, of black folks. Clan, spoiler alert, they're also all midgets. And then uh, <laughs> yeah. one of their one of their girlfriends is fucking uh, a center in the NBA. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Well, yeah, whenever we just put things together, you know, this is a conversation we're having on this show. This is the this is America. They would always have midgets on there too, and they'd always like For no reason. They just do that thing where they charge each other from across the stage where they'd be like <laughs> they have to get up. <laughs> Oh my god! But I, I had my when we were so fascinated by the whole phenomenon. Yeah, my mom was like, "We're gonna get the too hot for TV." <laughs> my mom was said that because she was like, "I can't believe this exists." We had a there's a girl in, who I went to high school with who was on Jerry Springer one time. Oh, for what? What was the thing? It was made up. She totally made the whole thing up. She just so what, she made it up, or the producers were like, "Yo, this." I don't is know if she did or if they did, but the story was completely made up. She's talking about how her fucking dad molested her and it was like i know like that shit happens this was completely fabricated whatever the story was she was like this trashy fucking girl and she was a terrible actress so it was like it just didn't come across but like our teacher in high school who like this girl was in class with well, I mean, she was in class with mm-hmm. and like two weeks later she's just gone and no one really knew what happened to her. <laughs> and then she ended up with jerry springer and like our our history teacher showed that tape to us in class with no me. you guys gotta watch this it was like this is fucking awesome, but this is where Kimberly's been for the past couple of weeks. <laughs> and at one point, I was like, "Yeah, by the way, she's like a piece of shit too. Her like her, her dad's a really nice guy. This like she's making this up." I'm like, "Yeah, I, didn't, I mean, she's on Springer, so I wasn't like, wow, she's a I want to marry her someday." But would she come back to school? No, I think her name was Misty Glover. Oh, great, <laughs> Misty, ah, if you're uh, out there. Yeah, she's probably dead of a heroin overdose. Uh, <laughs> she was shitty back in high school. How, how was her day back? Did she just never came back? I don't, I don't remember ever seeing her back, uh, but I thought it was one of those things where she just, like, moved away somewhere, too. Yeah, I would move, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, th- before this, like, she moved away. Oh, okay, okay. She just ended up on Jerry Springer. <laughs> but that was the thing. That's like, the credit. <laughs> that, was, that was the thing. Like, people would just go on Springer and make shit up. You know, there was a, that, fa- it was on, like, MTV Spring Break, I think it was. People went on Jerry Springer and just, uh, they made up the whole story. Like, th- it was the two dudes, and they were, like, fighting each other over this girl. And com- they were just all like friends, uh-huh. and then it came out later that they made the entire thing up, and that used to happen a lot because they didn't they didn't vet those people. They just wanted no, whatever no, no, no. crazy this story that was going to be on there. Talk about content creating. That was the <laughs> that was the master. That's the original. That was the original yes. content creation. You, oh, do you remember? Uh, there was there was a show. I was um, blind date. Remember that shit? It was on E. Uh, I'm sure I've probably seen it before, and I bet there's probably 15 other shows just like that. Too. No, no, no. It was like. Because there was one. To was actual blind people dating each other? Or? No. no. <laughs> I wish. Sometimes. No, this one was different. It no, was no. But so they, they put them together, and then uh, it's like the, the funny part of it is the little bubbles that will pop, little commentary oh, here Oh, yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Like someone would write those stupid comments. Yes. Yeah, I do remember that. And then they, they will have, like, you know, embarrassing moment in five, four, three, two, yes. one, and it goes for the kiss, and it's a headbutt, yeah. and they do that They do that 20 I times d- in a I row. Do, I do remember that, yeah. Oh, that's a good I, show. I got the DVDs. I got it on Sensor <laughs> DVDs. I got the DVDs. Fuck yeah, I got the DVDs. That shit is hilarious. Because I always, I always thought if I, because it's one of those shows, because this is before 
um, reality TV. This is like, and this is not fabricated. It's literally we put these two people together, yeah, and they go on a date, yeah. and we just follow them along, right? Every, everything in there is real. I, I'm sure that was. I'm sure that was well, uh, fabricated to an extent because even like reality TV, like there's a girl that is living down here now who's like a a writer on a reality TV show. I'm like, how do you write on reality TV? It's supposed to be unscripted, but yeah, they. It's well, all they have to say now if it's scripted and unscripted on shows. It, it's all scripted. I don't. I very Pro- probably. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grab water. Just keep talking real quick. And okay, finish. go ahead. Go ahead. So I, I always wanted to get on a. Blind date back in the day, cause like I wonder what they would say about me, you know, what kind of bubbles they would pop. Cause those guys were like, man, if you had a, if you had an ounce of self respect, like you wouldn't do the shit that you did on you that show. You wouldn't be on blind date. Yeah. Well, no, you would be on blind <laughs> date, but at least you'd like you'd s- score, or at least you don't come across score? as a douchebag. Well, I, haven't, I haven't heard somebody use the frame score at long. That's a very 90s. I'm not familiar, remember? Early 2000s <laughs> sc- uh, term for <laughs> getting away. That was fascinating. Did you score last did, night, did dude, you score? Yeah. Or did, what, what is it now? Because I'm outdated. I'm still using English. I don't know. I, I was get laid was always a thing that we would... Uh, I mean, it was never anything... Did you smash? That was never... That's very new. That's a very new thing, I feel like, right? Oh. Smash. No, it's been around for a while. It's been around. The one I've been hearing lately. I don't say stuff like that because I respect women. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's it's interesting to me when like new like new terminology comes comes around and you hear people say like that does not match your face. Like I heard a guy so the, the usually it comes out of New York. Like okay. New York is like where there's the new term for like it's lit you've heard that right wait what it's lit oh okay that's not what i thought you said what, i thought you said it's slit like <laughs> slit like you were talking about women's vaginas <laughs> god like, wow wow you know which, I mean, you which, know hey I mean, yeah listen, I've, I've heard it i've lit. heard i've heard it's, that it's, it's but lit. it's gross and people shouldn't say it <laughs> see this is my problem <laughs> it's the accent it's a little it, bit yeah, the, accent. The, yeah. The, the french comes out and i don't know where to put the the break <laughs> <laughs> between the words <laughs> that i'm trying to pronounce God, they all blend together. Uh, it's lit. Yes, I have heard it's lit. And it's like, it comes out, I think it came out of New York, and then all of a sudden, everybody says it. The one, the last one I heard was, uh, it's a vibe. Have you heard that one? No. Don't. <laughs> I mean, don't, 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 don't say don't. I mean, it's, say don't it, it's lit is never something I've actually said either. I've nah, heard people say it, it. It, it, it'd be weird coming out of your face. Yeah. It really would be. It's it, yeah. it, it's slit. Actually, I should, I should start that. <laughs> it's slit. <laughs> I mean, I think somebody already started it, but uh, you can bring it back. Sure. Yeah, I can, I can try. I can try. Who's going to follow me? I ain't no influencer. No way. That's that's the last thing I'd want to be. An influencer? Yeah. I'd like to have their money, but I mean, other than that, yeah. Yeah, but uh, it, it's, an, uh, it's something people aspire to be now. Like, that's like the... Yeah. Yeah, so that's a goal. Yeah, I mean the the reason why people put put out their phones when they go out and take selfies and and all that is like, yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. I want I want to have the wittiest comment. I want to have the best. Well, you see, because people would want to would aspire to be, you know, famous. For, no, or they would aspire to have. Like, yeah, of course, people would aspire to be famous. But people would aspire to have like a talent. You know, people. Would, I want to be a singer. I want to be a comic. I want to. And by doing that, you would become an influencer, right? I get, I get that. And, no, but I'm just saying it's weird how that's and now people are just like, I want to be an influencer. That's a th- that's an actual thing it's that one can aspire job. to do. Yeah, it's a job. Like just, but there's that there's no to talent a, to it. That used to be a byproduct of a talent. Yes, that you would become an influencer. I, and now, I respect that. I respect those people. Now it's a now it's an actual thing. I I can't. Do you know any any influencers? <laughs> no. I'm trying I to get him on the podcast. I mean, <laughs> Colton, I guess. Oh, like yeah, okay. Colton feels like he's an influencer. Oh, really? He told you that? <laughs> <laughs> he acts that like he thinks he is. Uh, let's let him think. <laughs> Dreaming is free. No, I don't. But I love I Colton. I love Colton. So oh, I'm he's, he's my he's my best pal. No, no he's, he's the shit. He's the shit. Uh, I forgot what episode he was on, but go back and check it out. Colton. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh yeah, him and Marty talked a bunch of shit about me actually. Yeah, well, I had him. By, I had Colton by himself too. Oh, that's after the whole. Yeah, out. yeah, after the whole, uh, no, the whole thing. Yeah, I, I, I didn't really get into the whole what happened there, but no, not, not not a, I don't give a shit. Yeah, I, I ain't got time for that. No, no, neither do I. I don't. I don't care. It's fine. 
Tab- I'm t- trying to do other stuff, you know. Mm. Um, R.I.P. Marty. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck to you in the mi- in the. I was, I was about to say Middle East. No, the Middle in East. The East. Yeah, you never know. You might be going there. That's that sounds about as likely as Northeast. Sounds about as likely as Philly. But <laughs> all all the best to you out there, man. Whatever whatever you yeah. get into, whatever you get into. I love you, Marty. I I'll miss you, buddy. Yeah, he'll he'll be all right. I, th- I think he'll be all right. He'll be fine. All right. What's your uh, what's your dope shit? My dope shit. Yeah. Um, all right. I. Uh, all right, combination, and this isn't anything new, but it's just something I, um, I read a lot, uh, and I'm like a nerd, uh, so I recently read, and then I watched the TV show The Expanse on Amazon. It's fucking awesome, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I wanted to do a combo book and, uh, and TV show, and it's fucking great, and I think the newest season's coming out very soon, and then the last book is coming out in like two months, and I'm super pumped for that. Okay. It's, uh, it's called The Expanse. It's, it's what, what is it? The Expanse. It's a. It's like a. It's a hard, hard sci-fi and uh, sci-fi and science fiction. Uh, like it's. Uh, it's basically Game of Thrones in space. Is how I describe it. Two okay. Guys, it's two guys that wrote it. They write it under the pen name James James Corey, and it's two dudes who are uh, George R R Martin's like personal assistants. Um, and it's just, ah, it's so good. It's like the first book's like. Uh, it's like a like a detective noir fiction in space. Uh, it's just really well written, and and the TV show's awesome. It's on Amazon. I think there's four seasons. The fifth one's coming out. Um, it rules. It's uh, it's the best thing I've seen in a long time. Sweet, the expense. Uh, my dope shit is uh, as you know, I'm a big cartoon fan. I love adult cartoons. Hell yeah. Uh, Same here. New season of Archer. Just started. Ah, I was just watching it the other night. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I fucking last love season of Archer. Last one. Oh, it is last one. Oh, yeah. that's right. That's right. Rest in peace to Jessica Walter. Oh, that was such a bummer, man. Yeah, She's, man. You ever hear the story about how uh, Adam Reed, like, he was pitching that show, and he's like, "Yeah, he's talking to his agent. He's like, he's describing the character of Archer's mother, and he's like, yeah, you know, we want someone like a like a Jessica Walter type." You yeah, know, like from from uh, Arrested Development, someone like that. Uh-huh. He's like, his agent called the next day. He's like, "Would it work if we just got you, Jessica Walter?" He's like, "Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, do that." <laughs> oh, she was the best. Yeah. So yeah, last season the Archer is uh, on FX or Hulu, wherever you listen, watch watch it. Oh yeah, I, I was a fan of Adam Reed. <clears throat> I was a big fan of Frisky Dingo. And that was no, but I think it was Sea Life 2021. I, I, I see. I never got super into Sea Life. Joe, Frisky man. Dingo is my shit. Um, I never I, got into it. Oh, it's the funniest fucking. Show. It was only two seasons, so it's like you okay. I'll have to go back and watch. But if you have like, uh, I think you have like HBO Max. Or yeah, it should be on yeah, there. Yeah. But uh, Sea Life 2021 is to crack me up. The black character was. <laughs> <laughs> no, the captain. The cat, yeah, the, the captain, captain was I remember because he died. That the, that voice actor died. Oh fuck! Uh, yeah, that's right. But yeah, uh, Eric Estrada was the Eric Mexican Estrada. dude. <laughs> uh, right I here. forgot who voiced Quinn. Quinn was the black guy, and then the blonde was the was the slut of the crew. <laughs> and I mean, those old were, those old Adult Swim shows. Were oh crazy. man, I, we were just talking about it the other day because I'm like, all the. Um, I mean, it's boomerang now, but I mean, would you think about all you know the uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Yeah, fuck it, Squidbillies. Squid, uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Boondocks. I was huge fan of Boondocks. I can't go on and on about cartoons. Maybe we should have started talking about that. Yeah, but I could have done a podcast just on cartoons, man. I don't know. If, uh, my my oh, uh, is Venture Brothers. That's yo. Best. Thank you. Yeah, that's the best. I was yes, uh, Venture Brothers. The it's like a uh, a fucked up Johnny Quest. Yeah, with some. <laughs> yeah, shout out Doc Hammer and uh, Jackson Public. Yes, uh, those guys got canceled. Well, the show got ca- they did not get canceled. They have an Ironman, uh, but I think they're gonna make a movie. Really? About doing a movie of the Venture Brothers? Yeah, which I sucks because so. that last season was fucking great. No, it was great. They, they ended up. Day. They ended up pretty well. Pretty well. Um, I had a crush on Doctor Girlfriend for the longest time. <laughs> I, not, not the voice, yeah. just the Do- body. Doctor <laughs> Mrs. The Monarch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man. Like the the season four. It was a two-parter. That was my th- oh, was that that show rules. Uh, I'm bummed. I mean, it's like anything else. It got to end. It's got to end at some point. But they feels like they just kind of pulled the rug out from underneath those guys. Uh, when they Ven- the Adventure really Brothers. Yeah, like the, those two, the two seasons where they're in New York were great. Um, and they just kind of. I wonder what the next thing's gonna be. Because I don't know. I hope those guys work together again and do something else too. But are you a Rick and Morty fan? I like Rick and Morty. 
I'm not. I do. I mean, I, I, I can't say that. I've I tried don't either. like Rick and Morty fans. I think they're obnoxious. True. That's why I, don't like, I think that's why I've never tried you it. You ever heard of the band Fish? Yeah. Love them. I uh, hate the fans. <laughs> 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 they're obnoxious to me. <laughs> no, I can't. That, that's exactly why I never got into Rick and Morty. Because yeah. everybody's. I, m- my best friend is a huge fan of it. It's like, you got to watch. You got to watch. I'm like, no, just let me. I dated this girl who was. Uh, bitch <laughs> and, uh, and a drug that's, that's why it's in the and past just, tense <laughs> and just and just a horrible person and she was like super into rick and morty and I, i'm like i know you don't understand half these jokes i know you don't <laughs> it's, a, it's a really smart show um and i love dan Harmon, man i love community i love most of the stuff that guy's done um i don't know I'm, lo- I'm looking i'm looking forward to the next one i used to watch harvey birdman <laughs> just as a concept <laughs> yeah as yeah, a concept of here's this superhero who plays an attorney who has to defend cartoons in yes. court. And remember, the first episode is the... Stephen Colbert was the, was the voice, Yeah, right? it was the voice of... Uh, remember, Stephen Phil. Colbert was fucking cool. Yes. Yeah, no, well, that's not... He's he's taking a dive, really. He sucks, man. Yeah, he sucks. He's I the CBS just, bitch. I just wanted to bring back Colbert Report, because that was one of the best shows. Everything ever. ends, man. That's the thing. We sound like two old uncles here. I know, here I know, but that show is so fucking Back in good. my day, we had The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Oh, I was we, never, like, a huge Daily... Like, I liked The Daily Show. But Colbert Report was the, the the character is this it's it's that uh, was the best satire that's it's uh, a master class in satire that's what it was probably the arguably the best that's, that's N- nobody ever been done. and you can't expect anybody to try to do anything similar yeah no I'm not not, not, not gonna now, happen because not now they, they just call you a bigot and a racist <laughs> you know what I mean? they like satire doesn't exist anymore no you just are well, no, I you just become know. the thing that you are trying to uh, satirize and like people no, hate you for it the best form of satire that's still kicking to this day is South Park well yeah because they can't get away with that yeah. that's such a track record that you can't even stop yeah. these guys I mean those guys are uh, you can't touch them those guys are, are brilliant I, I don't I, I don't even think that I haven't watched Family Guy in a while. I haven't either, but I just stopped Someone caring. It's, it's gotten good in the last couple of years. It has or hasn't? It's gotten it's gotten good again. Yeah. Family Guy? Yeah, I haven't watched it either. I mean, it's just like that. I I'm I'm a Simpsons guy. I grew up. Oh, uh, okay. I I grew up. The show's almost as old as I am. You know what I mean? Like, uh, so like the first ten seasons of The Simpsons, I still think are the funniest thing that's ever been on TV. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I got really into Family Guy. I like that, and it was just like once those show once they become like. It's literally just a. It's not a show anymore. It's just a thing that prints money for you. It's <laughs> like you gotta keep turning it out. Yeah, and like mean, the people that are like Seth MacFarlane created. It. He's not even involved anymore. He just goes in and reads lines off of shit. Like he doesn't give a fuck. You know what I mean? Like it's just. Do you? It's rem- just about turning out the product. Do you remember how like, um, there was the precursor to Family Guy, was a cartoon that Seth MacFarlane made. It was about basically a dumb. It was not Cartoon Network. It was a one shot thing and um it was about basically this dumb old man with this dog that was smarter than him. Was that and, true? And, and the dog look just became Brian. Yeah. And the dude and the dude became Peter. Okay. It was not it was not Cartoon Network. But it was like, hey, this is the new wave of cartoons. Yeah. And then from there, you had the Powerpuff Girls and you had Dexter's Lab and well, I mean, all that I, shit. W- w- as far as that, like sitcom. It's, it's, it all starts with The Simpsons, man. That, that's, that's yeah, and 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 I feel like um, going the cartoon route is a safe bet because yeah. you can be as raunchy. I mean, you remember when? Uh, I mean, Ethel Family. I I thought was funny. <laughs> I love that show. Um, there's uh, Rickleberry, Rickleberry, Brickleberry, Brickleberry. Uh, yeah, I I never got crazy into that. Yeah, but it's like if we just make it a cartoon, yeah, then that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, for like sure. we can't fuck the 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 sitcom of real people. Yeah. It could be as fucked up as we want it to be if we make it a cartoon, which works. Yeah, hundred percent, it works. Uh, but if you th- so, you think that that's all came from The Simpsons? I mean, I just think that that uh, that formula for like you know, it's it's a it's a family sitcom, but it's a cartoon. That's all. Yeah, I mean, the Simpsons. That's how the Seth MacFarlane built every <laughs> yeah every cartoon he has from yeah. the Cleveland show. Yeah, the was yeah that the was weird when it was just Border there. Town. Is it him, Border Town? Uh, Cleveland. He did the Cleveland show, American Dad. Yeah, uh, American Dad. It was now this Bob's Burger. Like it's, it's the same. I don't, same think, I don't think it's Bob's. Burger. No, it's not Bob's Burger. No, but yeah. uh, it's the same formula. It's like hey, here's a fucked up family. Yeah, and those like, like I said, eventually those the shows just become like products to print money. <laughs> like the people in The Simpsons have 
because you may be involved in a show for so long, they'll give you like points on the back end or whatever that fucking terminology is. You basically make money when the show makes money. And like those guys like Hank Azaria who have been there from the beginning are all worth so much fucking money. It's like they have to give them these insane just to make it worth like, yeah. All right. You get like you get like 75 percent of the Simpsons merchandise this year just to make it even more because they're already making like fucking eight hundred thousand dollars an episode. And there's, yep. you know, thirty five episodes a season. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> it's, yeah, that's where the money's at. Yeah, that's where the money's at. Man, I wish I would had gone that route. Yeah, had being a voice dope. actor. That seems pretty fucking dope. It, it is. It is. I mean, do you watch anime at all? Anime? No. I'm not. So, I'm just so you man. know. Um. Oh, shut up. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> We're, um, I, I need to end the podcast at some point. I don't want, I don't want to start. I, I, I yeah, your, yeah. I don't want to leave your house angry yelling at you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the people who do voice acting in Japan are superstars. Yeah. So, like, they go... Well, no, I very much like animation. There is it's it's it's, it's a lifestyle. It's not even an no, art. It is. It's, it's, it's beyond. Yes. You know, it's it's, it's it, oh, it's a billion dollar industry. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But it's like they go when they go places, they'll have full on conventions. Like okay, these are all the voice actors for Drive for Dragon Ball Z yeah. from One yeah. Piece, and and these are mostly older people. Yeah. Like the the lady who voices. I mean, you go to like conventions, like nerd conventions in the U.S. It's all it's not young, you know. I mean, it's not like the intended audience. Like comic yeah. book conventions aren't for kids; it's adults. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, but I'm talking about the actual people who do the voice acting. Mm. They're not. They're not always young. No, no. I mean, they're not always whatever gender they are. Like you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. You know, it's whatever noise you can make. But uh, you never, you never think that okay, the person who voices Goku is this. 70 year old grandma who's been doing it for <laughs> 50 years and no, it's like not. yeah but i mean it's it's like yeah they're they're fucking huge over there yeah yeah so i know what kind of money frank is there it makes but man it's, it's it must be nice yeah, yeah. <laughs> must be nice doing the voice acting yeah but anyway all that to say that was my archer was my dope shit yeah thanks for that tangent yeah, wow, that went off for a while. No, no, that's that's fine. Next yeah. time, next time we'll 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 start with the cartoon talk. Yeah, I, I love. I could, I could. I'll, I'll be sixteen. Watch cartoons. I fucking love it. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. I fucking love it. Yeah. Anyway, when can people find you? All that good stuff. I uh, just, uh, I think I have a Twitter account, but I never use it. Instagram, just Craig Fergola. Uh, Facebook, Craig Fergola. Uh, just come see me in Lower on Austin. Uh, Skank Fest. Yep. November fifth through the seventh. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm around. Come check it out. Austin uh, Austin rules. I love being here. Yeah. Just don't give him any drugs or anything. Yeah. Just don't. Good. G- <laughs> don't do that. that. Do not. Do not. He, <laughs> he'll bite you first, but he'll he'll <laughs> he'll have a smile on his face right after. <laughs> no. no uh, thank you, Craig. I really appreciate Thanks. it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Make sure you follow the feedback everywhere. I uh, got a bunch of people coming up soon. Uh, Who you that's it. On, I can tell you if they're good or bad. Say what? Who you get coming on? I can tell you if they're good or bad. Uh, d- 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 I'm gonna have Jublar. I've been meaning to have. I'm trying to get Jason know. Rouse at some point. Jason Rouse rules. Yeah, Jason Rouse. Rouse yeah. Yeah. Rouse is uh, I want to get Leah Sampson at some point too. Yeah. yeah I, don't I, don't know, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I don't know. Right? No, I. I no, I, I mean I the, li- the the list goes on. And, and the, here, here's here's my rule of thumb as far as like who who gets to to come. On on the podcast, it's people that say yes, no, <laughs> no, because I got I got it, because it it's more of a hey like do you want to talk to this person? Do you, do you fuck with me in the first yeah. place? Yeah, uh, and I mean, and this is uh, <laughs> this is, I called out Lucas about it because Lucas, I've I've met like three times and I was like, and he kept acting like he didn't I didn't exist, <laughs> and I confronted him on the podcast and I said, motherfucker. <laughs> You, uh, you would walk by me like I was invisible. I feel like Lucas is just super shy. No, it is, but yeah. I didn't know that. I thought it was just yeah. me. But it's, it, and then he said, "No, this is everybody. It's not just, yeah. it's not just you." But it's, it's a really good guy. Yeah, really good guy. So uh, that, that's how I pick the people that come on. That's if a you, good way to do it. If you yeah. fuck with me and we can actually talk, you yeah. know, you actually say hi and we talk outside of, you know, um, the mics and all that yep. stuff, then yeah, you have your spot. So don't oh, be yeah. scared. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in, Craig. Thank you for having me at your Absolutely. humble Absolutely. Anytime. Anytime. And we'll talk to you next time. Ciao, ciao.